Hello and welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce and I get to do some top news today. Top shelf news, in fact. This is where I talk about all things books and media and even a channel update here or there uh, as they relate to science fiction and fantasy, which is just, they're the best. Um, anyway, let's just jump right into it as usual. Uh, first news, I have a couple of cover updates. So these are pretty interesting. Uh, Martha Wells is headed back to fantasy. She's been, uh, this is uh, an author who has been around but uh, for some time, but, but finally I feel like kind of made a name for herself, especially recently with the Murderbot uh, Diaries, is, it, is that what it is? Murderbot series uh, of science fiction novels. And so anyway, heading back to fantasy, which has definitely been something she's been doing for quite some time, as far as I am aware of, uh, and, and it's exciting. So there's a cover reveal, we'll post that here. And uh, let me know what you think. It looks good to me and I hope and wish all the best uh, for Martha Wells. In other cover reveal news, Shannon Chakraborty, and I might be mispronouncing that, I apologize, has a new book out and it is called The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi. And I probably pronounced that all wrong too. A big update from Jannie Wirtz. She has finished uh, the the main, the hard hitting, the, the most difficult parts of the editing for the final book in the Wars of Light and Shadow. This is Song of the Mysteries. It's book 11. Uh, it's the only book of the final arc. It's just an, it's an interesting series how it's just put together. There are multiple different arcs that the series goes through. Oh, not, not dissimilar to uh, I, know, I know Brandon Sanderson has talked about uh, essentially two main arcs in the Stormlight Archive, the first five book arc and then the second five book arc. Uh, not dissimilar to that, uh, there are essentially five arcs in the 11 book series. Book one is its own arc, books two and three are their own arc. So four through eight is the third arc and then nine and ten being the fourth arc and then the last book being the fifth arc, so a nice little pattern there, whatever you want to call it, I think it has a name. I thought that was interesting, It's I've been following it rapidly. This is a series, as you can see behind me, uh, I'm a huge fan of and I'm excited that we're getting a conclusion. This is part of the reason why I've delayed in my reading of the series and now, or I guess I should say, keeping up on the series, wanted to make sure there was a, an ending here and since we're getting so close, the, the heavy lifting is really done. It's really about, well, it's now can go to the editor. We can see what the editor uh, says from here. All right, I wanted to make sure everyone knows it, it, we're still in Banned Books Week. I believe it is done Saturday. Uh, Banned Books Week is always a good one. I always appreciate it when it comes around. With that whole freedom of speech thing that I talked about in my last <laughs> Top Shelf News, uh, this is one of those where you can't really ban a book and or you shouldn't and if you do then you're only going to get people clamoring more for it and so first of all it defeats the purpose of the banning uh, but second of all if you're banning books you're probably on the wrong side of the issue <laughs> um, and have to close off ideas from people you're on the wrong side. The good guys don't do the banning. They allow for the freedom. They allow for uh, the ability for people to choose on their own. I always, uh, I do find it interesting. I do feel like the people that are supporting Banned Books Week the most can often be the ones that are the first to deplatform people or, or unplatform. And that's again, one of these things that uh, I, I think you should kind of look at what the whole point of Banned Books Week is all about and is really censoring those ideas and or not, right? And keeping the, the censoring um, uh, out of it, right? Out of ideas. And we want to keep it uh, a free place uh, for that. So anyway, get off my <laughs> soapbox there. Speaking of books, uh, in other news and Amazon news, Amazon has, has had a policy. It's been it's been problematic for some time, but it's been a policy that's been permitted. What they'll do is allow people to read a full book and still return the book. So they can buy a book from Amazon, read the whole book, then return it, get their full money back. Amazon, I know as a business practice, I'm sure it's just good to, uh, to have that ability for people to uh, 
to do returns, right? I mean, typically in my experience with buying things from Amazon, returns are pretty low key, pretty easy going. And so in, in a business sense, Amazon, this works for Amazon, but does it work for the authors? It really can hurt the authors. Cause let's be honest, I mean, what else is the book? It's not always just about owning it. Clearly, I, well, and I think there's an argument that collecting books versus actually reading them, I think they're two different hob hobbies. And I guess you can do this with books is you can read it and then return it. Uh, but especially with digital purchases, they're not going to be allowed to be returned. Um, and that just makes sense. It just, once you've read it, you've consumed it. You've, you've gotten your money worth, right? And uh, it just it doesn't make any sense to me that they would allow it. And it only makes sense, uh, we wanna, I wanna encourage more authors to put their works out there, more things to read, more greatness to be discovered out there uh, and promote the authors and the people that are reading, or buying the books and reading them and returning them. I just doubt that that's the type of person that is really going to be affected much anyway. So. <laughs> Um, and also, I don't care if they don't get their money back. Um, but even if you didn't like it, even if you didn't, you still consumed it, right? And it's still to that degree, especially it's, if it's a book they can track if you fully read it. Uh, although I will say often, Amazon, I'll, I'll look at a book and maybe check the ending to see whatever the end matter, there's other author, bio, whatever it may be. And then the book will suddenly say that I've read it, even though I just looked at the end. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if it can track that well. <laughs> Who knows? I think overall it's a good policy. In other news, uh, Joyce Carol Oates made some statements. Joyce Carol Oates isn't really known for writing science fiction or fantasy, uh, but makes a lot of statements about genres that I hold near and dear to my heart, right? So she writes, I wonder if a predilection for science fiction excludes an interest in fantasy and the reverse. Any plot device of a special destiny is, to me, irrevocable. I am likely to stop reading. But a thought experiment can be intriguing despite flat characters and unspectacular language. Making a lot of assumptions there. I mean, so it's immediately assuming, I guess, that all fantasy is flat, has flat characters is about a special destiny. Um, I mean, I've read lots that aren't. I mean, that's a, definitely a trope. I can't say it's not, but is it all fantasy to group it all in? A lot, this doesn't make sense. Then not to mention, can a fantasy, a science fiction fan be a fantasy fan? I enjoy both. I just have made videos on reading more science fiction even though I'm a huge fantasy fan. As, as much as you can call uh, Star Wars a science fiction, which I think you, you generally kind of, it, it falls under that category, even though it is more like space magic and, and space fantasy, uh, in the sense that you call it science fiction, it has a special destiny. It, it has uh, the one who can bring balance to the force and all that. So again, but it includes both of them. So right, like even just, there's one example, boom, right at the top of my head. I have not read all of the science fiction books in the world, but I assume that's not the only one that has that sense. <laughs> It goes on though, um, and I'm sure even more, but these are what I found. She quote tweets that tweet and says, for instance, mystery, detective, police, or legal procedurals are antithetical to horror slash fantasy. If you like one, you will not usually like the other because traditional mysteries must be realistic. Otherwise, detection makes no sense. Again, it's like, read Dresden. I could just like off the top of my head there's tons of this stuff I read uh, let's see Black City Demon I feel like is one and again just not fundamentally and, and again I guess I mean maybe she hasn't read a lot of fantasy but just like man that's a lot of assumptions on like what is it fantasy based on like having read one fantasy book ever in her life like and it was, was the Belgariad I don't know like that's all I can think of is that, that meets all of her criteria and that's it. Again, as a fantasy fan, as someone who, and I think even like Brandon Sanderson's rules of magic kind of apply here, uh, as long as it's internally consistent, you can, and you use it in a way that you've described it well, 
and it has the, the rules and it has the, the limitations uh, and you're, you keep yourself within those bounds and again, internally consistent. I saw a quote that said that and I was like, yes, exactly, that's, that's the thing. That's what fantasy needs or horror or whatever it may be. Uh, but again, I mean, even horror, I feel like there's, I can't even pin it down exactly, but I mean, isn't that generally like in, in movies, it's, there's some kind of a mystery and someone's there to solve it. Isn't there like a, what is it, paranormal? No. How many ghost stories are that? Or um, what's the famous one? Anyway, there's like so many I, that come to mind that I can see in my head, but I, don't, I can't actually describe the title. That, that are a mystery, that are like a, a, some kind of procedural trying to figure this out. I just don't even know what these even say. I'm, I'm sorry to waste so much time on this. It doesn't make any sense to me is really what it comes down to. Uh, and just wanted to defend fantasy and science fiction, but mostly fantasy it seems like is getting a, a, a rough time here. And I wanted to even more so defend fantasy. I really feel like fantasy is a genre that allows you to, to almost like really test morality, really throw out, I mean, I've, I've read things. The Long Price Quartet is one that really jumps up to me where you can test the morality of a situation of essentially the power of like one superhuman being and what they can do and um, whether the sacrifice of life uh, for this one power is worth it and um, or the sacrifice of a whole culture is worth it and and I just there's the, like it can be explored so well in a fantasy setting you can really just test your morality in this all right and then finally um, I only had a little bit of media uh, media there is a new M. Night Shyamalan movie coming out it's knock knock at the cabin <laughs> <laughs> Knock at the Cabin, uh, from the book The Cabin at the End of the World, which I think I like better. The Cabin at the End of the World, isn't that more like mysterious? A Knock at the Cabin, anyway. It's by Paul Tremblay is the book, uh, but it's, you know, M. Night Shyamalan movie. Uh, looks good. It looks good. It's got Dave Bautista. Uh, it's, got, um, it's got the guy who does the voice of Kristoff in <laughs> Frozen. It's got Jonathan Groff, and I just, I... <laughs> I think I became a huge fan of his after watching Hamilton, and he just did such a good job with the king in that. Um, but like, and I'll like watch anything he's in. Um, but it looks good. I even just like looked it up. Might be my next uh, read because uh, <laughs> my library has it, and it's that time of year for a good spooky read, as Mike's book reviews calls it, uh, for October. So anyway, are you excited for that? I know uh, Shyamalan has some uh, ups and downs. Uh, you know, really started off strong in his directing career uh, and then has been hit or miss, but I feel like he's made kind of a bit of a comeback uh, with a bunch of, of movies that I can't name right now. What is it, isn't there one like old or something? Anyway, um, but I this one looks good and there's lots of, uh, this is, I learned it from, uh, uh, from T. James Kelly, author that I love and a friend of mine. Um, and so I, and he had nothing but good things to say about the book. So that made me want to jump into both the book and get excited for the movie. Again, it looks intriguing. I'm, I'm already like getting like, is it a 10 Cloverfield Lane kind of book or movie? Like where, like, I don't know, spoiler alert, where you're kind of like, is it the whole time you're just like is there actually a an alien invasion <laughs> like uh, anyway in, in knowing that it's kind of related to uh the other cloverfield to cloverfield uh you kind of knew there was but it was still you'd even go is it like i was questioning it the whole movie great movie by the way uh but anyway what are your thoughts uh what's what's the news that i missed <laughs> what is going on uh, anything else let me know in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe really appreciate it really helps the channel and we will catch you next time bye